How's it going guys? It's Harvey from Weather Sponge 5000 and we have a lot to talk about. Of course, in the Northern Atlantic, we have six tropical disturbances, so it's very active right now. Of course, we now have post-tropical cyclone Idalia, which just came off the coast of the Carolinas very recently. Its maximum sustained winds, however, are still around 65 miles per hour, so it still has the strength of a tropical storm, just not necessarily categorized as a tropical storm because it's um it, a lot of its strength is mainly due to barrel clinic influences so of course it wouldn't be considered a tropical storm at that point but still this could be something to watch whether this post tropical or not because we see because there could be that possibility that this could curve back towards the northeast and bring direct impacts to portions of new england as well as portions of the mid-atlantic um so so we're definitely going to talk about that in this video and we also have hurricane franklin with its maximum sustained winds around 90 miles per hour but it's expected to move out to sea which is good news we have tropical storm jose which recently just formed it wasn't expected to form into a tropical storm it was only expected to remain in a tropical depression but of course we see that change but it's likely going to weaken and dissipate uh, mainly due to the fact that franklin will pretty much absorb any energy associated with jose we also have what likely will become tropical storm cadia which will develop within the next 48 hours and we have another tropical disturbance which could be a, a bigger concern in the more long-term future where this could potentially come closer to caribbean or even the united states if we see just enough ridging just on north of it we're going to talk about all these disturbances in this video um in detail so here's how the water vapor imagery is looking right now for all these disturbances. So this is where the remnants of Idalia is, which is definitely, um, it pretty much doesn't look like a tropical storm at all. It just looks like your typical everyday cold front moving through, but the, the remnants is still certainly there. There's still a little bit of rotation, barely any convective activity, and the winds are still there, but it's mainly due, like I said, to barrel clinic influences. This storm is definitely struggling thanks to dry air but its strength but its wind speed is still being maintained by the fact um, that there's still uh, quite a bit of instability just to the west of this storm system now this could eventually gain a little bit more instability once this moves a little bit further southward and may maybe could potentially avoid the dry air just a little bit um and however it, um it could potentially move up northward so even if this doesn't bring a heavy amount of convection this still could bring gusty winds and um strong wave heights right up along the northeast coast so there's only something to keep in mind because i do expect the convection to increase with trouble storm idalia and we also have um hurricane franklin like i said we'll move out to sea thanks to this cold from moving through so it won't necessarily bring much of any impacts outside of a high rip current risk so watch out along northeast um but we do but um when it comes to our future tropical storm tropical storm um katia we do see that there's quite a bit of convection going on however this is expected to move northward and we do see the clouds move a lot faster for northward this is where the wind shear is a lot stronger so it is likely to dissipate once this moves further northward and our next big disturbance is a lot further eastward it isn't shown right now in the water vapor imagery but just know that there's a lot of convective activity associated with it and that could be an issue once this approaches the caribbean where the european model wants to develop nearly a hurricane with that tropical disturbance also here is tropical storm jose and you probably um if i didn't mention this to you or if you didn't hear about tropical storm um jose you probably wouldn't even notice that it develops since it's just a small piece of convective activity it pretty much just looks like an outer band of hurricane franklin not necessarily a uh, independent tropical storm but eventually this um area um tropical storm jose will get absorbed by the much stronger hurricane franklin so this won't have much of a future um beyond let's say 48 hours so that's certainly good news um that we won't really see this storm have much of a future now let's take a look at the european model so based on the latest run of the european model i'll first want to focus on 
um, tropical or post tropical cyclone Idalia. We do see, like I said, there's plenty of dry air currently slowing Idalia down from really intensifying. However, the instability is what's keeping this low pressure system going as it has a very mid latitude cyclone look where we see the dry air on the western side, much of the moisture on the eastern side, very reminiscent of a uh, mid latitude cyclone moving through the United States during, um, let's say, during the fall or winter months. Um, and we do see this eventually does strengthen um, partially due to instability, as well as the fact that it'll at least attain some tropical characteristics of sea surf temperatures over a large portion of the western Atlantic are hovering around 80 degrees. So of course it'll develop at least some sort of thunderstorm activity associated from tropical influences, not, not necessarily entirely from barrel clinic influences. And while there is a lot of dry air, like I said, the barrel clinic influences are is will sort of help this storm maintain its wind speed strength despite the lack of convection. And what does become concerning is that the European model eventually does take a landfall in the more long-term future by next week, right around New England. And I'll say this will definitely most likely be considered a post-tropical cyclone at this time. It won't necessarily be considered a tropical storm. Um, there still could potentially be tropical storm warnings issued along the coast um, because um, after Hurricane Sandy, the National Hurricane Center did update their protocol when to issue a tropical storm or hurricane warning. Um, they do it now for even post-tropical cyclones because after what Hurricane Sandy did, um, pretty much um, the National Hurric the National Weather Service had to issue high wind warnings rather than hurricane warnings, which sort of misled people because. Um, hurricane because while Hurricane Sandy technically wasn't a hurricane, it was a post tropical cyclone, but it had hurricane like impacts. So we saw, of course, the National Hurricane Center um, cha um, pretty much change their protocol on when to um, announce tropical storm warnings. So there still could be tropical storm warnings issued, even if this necessarily isn't a uh, uh, a uh, fully tropical entity by the time it approaches New England. But the reason why the um, European mall wants to take this storm towards New England is due to the fact that there is expected being a, um, to be a strong amount of ridging. And unless a chalk could dig down deep enough to steer this storm out to sea and allow the westerly winds to move it away from the coast, and we could potentially see this move up towards the northeast and bring heavy rainfall, gusty winds, and potentially um, some coastal flooding in some cases, depending on how strong it is. The good news is that it won't be, it's at least for right now, it isn't expected to be very strong at landfall. This is primarily around mid um, tropical um, storm strength, maybe 50 to 60 miles per hour, but that still could bring rough surf, heavy rainfall, um, and gusty winds. Um, let's take a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly to show you guys what I'm talking about. So let me go all the way back to where we are right now. We do see this, this is where Idalia is. Um, this is a trough that's going to steer Frank Franklin um, out to sea. However, the key thing is, is that this ridge um, that's just the west of Idalia is expected to build in just the north of it and sort of just trap it. We see um, that the ridging builds around the northern Atlantic, so this can't easily go out to sea anymore, and it's sort of trapped on under this very strong trough. And like I said, unless this trough located right over northern Canada is able to dig down deep enough to steer this out to sea, then we easily could see a landfall in New England. So we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to how the ridging builds. Based on what the GFS model is stating, we do see the GFS model, while it does eventually expect a leftward um, turn, it expects this chop to at least dig down deep, deep enough for the winds to shift from more of a westerly direction and eventually steer out to sea just before it makes, um, just before it impacts on New England, which would certainly be the best case scenario. However, what makes me concerned with this forecast is that both computer models are at least acknowledging that there's going to be a strong enough of a ridge to eventually t um, steer this storm closer to the northeast the gfs model certainly is a better case scenario but when we see two computer models agree that there's going to be a left turn the possibility certainly exists now for 
the northeast. We're definitely going to need to see if this forecast persists. There's still a lot of days to go to iron out the forecast and see how strong this ridge is. So I'll keep you guys updated over the next several days right over the northeast. Now moving on to our next disturbances we're keeping a close eye on. So let me go back to the European model first. Um, we of course have Hurricane Franklin but it won't be much of a worry. We'll move out to sea thanks to this chaff um, that I just showed you um, right here. So I'm taking a look at that. Um, let me show you guys the 12Z run for the more long-term future. Yeah, you see that this chomp will move it out to sea, so not much to worry about outside of rip currents. And then for future tropical storm Katia, um, the thing is, is that there's not going to be a strong amount of ridging. There's going to be a trough located over this area, so it has an open lane to just move northward, which is certainly good news because, of course, when a tropical cyclone moves this far up north, then it's unlikely that it could move any further westward without getting deterred by um, the westerly winds or at least dissipating because not only because of cooler sea surf temperatures but the dry air certainly increases the further northward it goes and it just dissipates in the european mall scenario and that's highly likely at this point the forecast is very certain that this will move northward and likely dissipate which is certainly good news so not much to worry about right there and then um, however, it does become a little bit more concerning taking a look at our next potential tropical cyclone where we do see the European model is expecting a pretty powerful tropical wave to come off the West African coast, have a decent amount of moisture around it, and have a compact enough structure to where it does develop into a tropical storm. The, this storm isn't elongated like the previous um, tropical storms we've been, uh, or tropical waves we've been seeing come off the West African coast. We do see it's very small and that allows the energy to be a lot more efficient and the heat engine to be a lot more efficient for the convection to increase the pressure lower along the surface and as a result the wind speed and rotation to increase for this to become a tropical storm and that's exactly what we see here the good news is that at least compared to yesterday the european mall wants to take this further northward of the caribbean and an even weaker storm compared to yesterday's run but this is so 240 hours out so we could see variations with the forecast and where maybe it could move southward or northward and this could become potentially stronger or weaker um but um the key th but i think the big reason why the um european model isn't as um lenient as shutting it as much as before is for one thing is that the dry air because we do see that the remnants of um tropical of um, of what will become um, likely tropical storm um, Katia or um, or even um, the um, the tropical s storm after that. Um, I'm not entirely sure of the name just yet, um, but. Um, we do see that this wave moves southward and it brings a little bit, um, it eventually evolves into an upper level low that um, brings a little bit more dry air. And we do see this storm, it becomes very lopsided when it comes to the amount of moisture um, surrounding it. And um, that definitely would uh, make it more difficult for it to intensify. It does consolidate a little bit later um, once it avoids dry air, but it might struggle thanks to dry air. And also another thing too is that while on the wind shear map, it doesn't show that there will be a high amount of wind shear surrounding a center of circulation. We need to take a look at it in better contact um, context by taking a look at the sounding because while the wind shear map doesn't show a strong amount of wind shear, it does show quite a bit of a shift in wind direction with height, which is the reason why the European model isn't as lenient as strengthening as much as before. So we're definitely going to need to keep a close eye on the amount of dry air that will exist over the northern Atlantic. And also, the further north of this moves, I'll say the less likely it is to develop because dry air would increase further northward. The wind shear would increase further northward because the, the surface level winds, um, like you see right here, are facing primarily from an easterly direction, while the upper level winds are primarily coming from a, a no, more northerly um, direction, which would definitely um, create a stronger amount of wind shear the further northward it moves because um, the um, the upper level winds and lower level winds um, wouldn't really um, coincide with each other if this were to move further northward. So definitely pay close attention to this. Um, it really all depends on the ridging. Let me show you guys the 500 millibar height anomaly right now. So the G the European mall still expects a decent amount of ridging to be there initially, but we should see just enough of weakness um, in ridging um, right by the time this, um, we approach September 8th. Um, but, there, but what gets me worried is that looking beyond the 240 hour mark 
We don't see much of a weakness in ridging beyond this point. We see a strong amount of ridging over the United States, and that could be concerning because it's looking like this might not have an area where it could escape and avoid the United States at this point because we see ridging on all um, areas of the, the northeast to steer this further westward. So we're going to need to see if this holds up um, and it's still uncertain if this will develop at all because the GFS model is still um, iffy on that. If we were to take a look at the relative humidity map for the GFS model, we do see that the GFS model doesn't really develop anything out of this next tropical wave, mainly due to the fact that it expects a little bit too much moisture, um, too much dry air as well. Um, it does eventually develop up um, a tropical storm um, right just behind um, the initial tropical storm the European model wants to develop. Um, but for um, at least um, this tropical storm that the National Hurricane Center is listing as having a possibility of developing, a GFS model isn't developing it. Um, and I think it's due to the fact that the energy is just too spread out um, and the dry air is just too much. So definitely pay close attention to this. So uncertainty with the forecast. Let me pay close attention to the amount of ridging and moisture we'll see over the northern Atlantic. Here's a quick look at the European ensemble members, and when it comes to tropical storm Idalia, it does become concerning because we have quite a bit of ensemble members wanting to take a landfall somewhere in the northeast. Again, like I said, it isn't expected to be very strong if it were to make landfall, um, but it still could bring heavy rainfall and gusty winds. Um, and I do at least expect a left hook to occur. It just it um really the big question um remains how big will that left hook be? Will be um will the left hook be pronounced enough to where it'll make um bring a landfall to towards the northeast, or will le the left hook not be as pronounced like the GFS model is saying and move out to sea? We're definitely going to need to pay close attention to the mountain ridging that's going to be just um to the north of this storm. And when it comes to um our next potential hurricane, we do see quite a bit of ensemble members do want to develop a hurricane um just to the north of the Caribbean islands. And based on what I saw with the ridging over the northeast. Maybe this could make a journey straight towards the United States. We're definitely going to need to pay close attention to all those scenarios. Here's the National Hurricane Center's forecast when it comes to the cone of uncertainty. And we do see um, the National Hurricane Center isn't listing that left hook just yet. But I do expect the cone to shift a little bit further and further westward, which would play... Be a little bit more concerning for the northeast so in the northeast you at least want to be aware of this as we approach next week because some of the computer models are leaning a little bit more towards landfall right around the northeast so all in all, there's a lot to talk about in the um, Northern Atlantic when it comes to hurricane season. Um, so much so that I could talk all day about every um, each one of these tropical disturbances. But then this will be this video would be an hour long. But um, but pretty much what you should take from this video is that Northeast be aware of the possibility. I will at the very least expect high rip current risks associated with the remnants of Idalia. So watch out along the beach, especially this Labor Day weekend. Especially since Franklin will still be out there and um, and there is that possibility of a landfall at this point as a tropical storm or what will um, be at least considered tropical storm strength. Um, and then a hurricane um, could potentially develop based on what the European model is stating. Just pay close attention to the dry air and the ridging just to the north of this storm. But that's it for now guys and I thank you guys for watching.